You're listening to the Hope Company Podcast. Our mission is that you're refreshed, restored, and released. Check back each week for new messages, and we hope that you are encouraged by the word today. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Come on, celebrate God with a hand clap. Celebrate him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, worship team, for blessing us, uh, for leading us faithfully uh, every single time we gather together. Hey, guys, we're in a series called Stained Glass. Everybody say Stained Glass. Uh, Stained Glass is just a series, and and we just tell everybody uh, that uh, we know that we are a new church um, kind of doing things in a, in a new way, uh, but we still hold fast to old school traditions. Come on, somebody. I got two people that's with me. Uh, uh, we, we still hold fast to, to the foundations of the faith, right? Uh, and, and I want to be perfectly clear about that because sometimes uh, people can get uh, confused and some people can think because you're new that maybe you're doing something that's, that's different. Uh, uh, we, we are new, but we're not doing anything. That We're holding fast uh, to the foundations uh, 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 of, the, of the truth, the foundations of the scriptures. And so, and so but uh, in this series, we're going back and we, we're walking through some things to let people know clearly, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, what we believe. Okay? Uh, so if you guys have any questions, uh, you can know to do this series, this is what we believe. First of all, we believe in the Bible. We've talked about that. Uh, that was our first message. We believe in the Bible. Come on, y'all. The whole, the totality with, from Genesis to Revelations, right? From, from in the beginning uh, to amen. Come on, somebody. We believe in the whole thing. We believe that the Bible is the authoritative word of God. We believe that God used men uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures. Now, some people will tell you, oh, they were just men and all oh, that book is old. Listen, that book is relevant. It is alive. It is, it is sharper than a two-edged sword is what the Bible says. Uh, we, we believe the scriptures, the authoritative word of God. Next thing, we believe in the Trinity. That's what we talked about last time we met. We believe that the Trinity, we believe that God presented himself uh, in three different ways. They're three in one. Huh? We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Jesus always said, I and the Father, we're one. Right? Then Jesus said, I got to go away from y'all. If I don't go away from y'all, then the Comforter will not come. The Holy Spirit will not come. Huh? So we believe that God presented himself, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we talked about how you see that uh, over in the Gospels when Jesus goes to get baptized. When Jesus goes to get baptized, uh, it says as, he's, as John the Baptist baptizes him, he comes up out of the water. Uh, the Spirit descends on him like a dove. Come on, somebody. And then a voice comes from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'm running today, y'all. The, um, what we're talking about today, we believe in the power of prayer. Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? Uh, We believe in the power of prayer, right? We believe that prayer has the power to produce wonderful results. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in in what prayer can do. We believe that prayer is our way that we communicate with God and God communicates with us. We believe that the Holy Spirit that lives within us, the scripture says, even when I don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit is making groanings inside of me that cannot be uttered with words, and he's communicating with our God. Just pausing for dramatic effect. Okay. We, we believe huh, in, in the power of prayer. We walk into James chapter, 5, James chapter 5, 13 through 18. I need y'all to stay with me uh, just real quick. Uh, this first line of scripture may be a little small. Some of you may not be able to read it from the back, especially if you're 45 and older. Come on, somebody. Woo. 
Ooh, I'm trying to be easy. I'm trying to be, but hey, the older I get, I'm holding that phone a little further away, further from my face. Come on, somebody. Huh? I ever tell y'all my story when I went to the eye doctor and he told me, he said, uh, you having trouble reading up close? I was like, no. He's like, how old are you? I was like, I was about 43. I was like, I'm about 43. He's like, you will. <laughs> like, and he ain't telling a lie. So, here we go. 13 says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Now, watch how many times prayer end up in this scripture. If any of you are suffering hardships, you should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises, right? We'll talk about that in a minute. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Hold on, y'all. Don't freak out over the oil thing. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Huh? Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. We believe that prayer, right, it produces wonderful results. Yeah. 17, I need to include this one in there because you guys need to see this. It said Elijah uh, was a, as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Huh? What? Okay, we'll talk about it. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crop. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that when we pray, God is listening. Come on, somebody. I believe this. Uh, I just get this image in, in my head uh, because I believe that when we start to call on his name, that God leans in from heaven and he cups his ear. Come on, somebody, to hear the, what we're saying. That's why I believe, this is what I personally believe, that we shouldn't use the Lord's name in vain because anytime I say the word Lord or I call God, huh, he, he, he comes to attention. Come on, somebody. Huh? But if I say God and I'm just playing around with it, he comes to attention like, oh, man, you're just messing around. You don't mean nothing. Come on, somebody. Huh? So we ought to use God's name with reverence and respect. So when we call on his name, God is leaning in from heaven, and he's listening to your prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. A few things I want to share with you real quick. Prayer is the only thing ever prescribed by the great physician. Ooh-wee, that's better. That's better than y'all shouting right now, huh? Huh? Prayer is the only thing ever prescribed by the great physician. Now, understand this. I believe in earthly physician. I believe that we need to go to the doctor. Huh? But I believe that first we need to go to the great physician before we make any other move. Before I go to the cabin and get the Tylenol. Come on, somebody. Huh? If I, before I get the Dimetap, come on. Right? Huh? Uh, before I do anything else, uh, before, during, and after, I need to be seeking the great physician. I need to be praying and seeking the Lord. Amen? Because a lot of times, this is the last thing that we do. Huh? After we've been taking about 24 ibuprofen and I still got the headache, <laughs> you're like, Lord, please help me. Huh? And I was like, look, you should have asked me a long time ago. Come on, right? I was asked me from the beginning, right? Seek the Lord from the beginning. Prayer is the only thing ever prescribed by the great physician. Watch what it says. Are any of you suffering hardships? That hardship right there, that words mean any setbacks? Uh, has anybody had any setbacks? He said, you should pray. Somebody here today, you're like, man, I had a setback this week. Come on, somebody. Huh? Somebody said, I had a setback this morning. Help me. Huh? Guess what he said you should do? You should pray. Huh? Yeah, sometimes we get to going and we forget to pray. Come on. Your pastor coming clean. What? Pastor, you took? Sometimes, yes. Because sometimes we get so busy. Come on. And we're ripping and running and doing everything else. And we're trying to solve the problem and take it instead of taking it to the problem solver. Ooh, that's so good, y'all. I'm going to re rewind that. Get him. Hey, it says, are any of you suffering hardships? Guess what you should do? Pray. So if you're going through anything, if you've been going through anything, you had a setback, you need to pray. Huh? Pray. All right? And it says, are any of you happy? You should sing praises. I believe this, that, that, that when we sing praises, it's just my verbal prayer put to a melody. Come on, somebody. Huh? So when I'm singing praises, I am giving God praise. I, I'm saying, thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for blessing me. And so, so when I sing praise, it's a form of a prayer. 
Are any of you sick? Watch this. You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you. Huh? You should call for the elders now. The elders, it all depends, you know, different churches have it set up different ways. And you can look at this thing. Um, we, we here at, at, at the Hoko, we, we have elders. We have people who are elders. And you guys are going to meet them in the next week or so. We're going to bring them before you so you guys can see that I'm not running this by myself. Amen. Okay, all right, I'm just watching y'all, watching, all right? And, and so, um, so it, it says, if you're sick, call for the elders. Now, I also believe that elders are, are seasoned saints as well, huh? People who've been through hardships, people who've been through tough times and know that God will see you out of it, huh? It says, call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you. Now, now, in order for that to happen, then I got to admit that I'm sick. All right. Now, that sick means not only physically, but morally as well. Uh, if you dig into that word sick and how it's used there, it not only means physically, but, but morally as well. Man, if I got some, some sin issue in my life, elder, I need you to come pray for me. But in order to do that, I have to admit that I have this going on in my life. See, sometimes we are sick physically and we don't tell nobody. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. I ain't saying that you ought to be putting it on Facebook and all that stuff, right? But I believe that we rob ourselves when we don't allow other people to know so they can pray for us. Come on, I need y'all to, to listen, right? Huh? We rob ourselves, right? Uh, and, and, and listen, uh, please, uh, please hear this the right way because uh, I, I know some people, I've been in churches before where people will go in the hospital and stay for a while and then come out and then say, yeah, I was in the hospital last week. Like, whoa, 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 you didn't tell anybody? I mean, let us know, at least let us know so we can pray for you, maybe come visit you, lay hands on you. You should call for the elders of the church to come pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord, right? Now, some people say, man, when you pull out the oil, they say, uh-oh, that's a little charismatic. That's a little more than I, huh? It's scripture. Huh? I think it's just a step of obedience. You're doing what God actually do. If you're the elders, the elders come. They anoint you with oil and they pray over you, huh? Now, listen, I don't necessarily believe that there's power in the oil. There's power in our God. Come on, somebody, right? Huh? Right? But I believe that the oil can be a healing agent huh, that God uses in order to set us free. Right? And we rob ourselves when we don't allow people to come into our lives to help us, to pray for us. Listen, that's why I always say uh, when we have a prayer time at the end of the service, that's why I always pray, listen, please do not leave here today without letting us pray for you. That's why I always say that. Uh, because, listen, it, uh, when you leave here and that weight's still on you, man, you can get that thing off of you today if you let us pray for you. Man, so I, I need praying for all right? It says anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will. It will do what? Come on, read it with me. One, two, three. Heal the sick. It will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you. And if you have committed any sins, you will be. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. See, that's the process of me getting well, especially when there's a moral failure. Confess that sin, get healed, right? Now, let me, let me tell you this. Make sure if you, like, if you confess that sin, go to an elder, a seasoned saint, somebody who's not new in the faith. Come on, y'all. Huh? Because I don't believe everybody can handle your stuff. Somebody have your stuff on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Go to somebody who, who you can trust, who are seasoned in the faith. So they can say, man, look, I'm praying for you. Huh? And they, they will actually pray. Come on, let me just say that too. Come on, Christians, sometimes we're guilty of saying, I'll pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. And we don't ever pray. You know what I try to get in the habit of doing now? Huh? Do it right then and there. That's right. Huh? When I feel it coming out of my mouth, you know what I'm going to pray for? Let, let me pray for you right now. <laughs> right? Because more times, I know me, if I walk away from it, guess what? Most of the time, I'm going to forget it. 
Not unless I write it down or put it in my phone. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Look, number two, pray persistently and privately. Pray persistently and privately. Everybody say persistently, persistently. (laughs) Yeah, don't say it like I said it, persistently. (laughs) Say it persistently and privately. Come on, somebody. It says this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Right? The earnest prayer, now, that prayer means, it means fervently, it means persistently that, man, I am going to dig my heels in. Come on, somebody, listen. Uh, when, when I was growing up, come on, let me talk real quick. When I was growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother's name was Clara Williams, huh? Right? My grandmother was, uh, uh, back in the day, helped help start uh, Pilgrim Baptist Church on, on, on the corner of D and 3rd Street in Martinsville, Virginia. It's still there, y'all. Uh, several years ago. Uh, man, uh, my grandma used to pray, yo, and she used to go to those prayer meetings, right? Uh, and sometimes we would have to go to the prayer meeting. Hmm. As a kid, you're like, huh, I ain't trying to be up in here, right? Because uh, the prayer meeting, you know, could last a while, huh? And so they'd be up in there praying, you know, and just, and just praying and seeking the Lord. Back in the day, you used to call it tarrying, Huh? Tarrying, like waiting on the Lord, waiting for the Lord to answer. They would tarry. They would pray to the Lord, give them an answer. And they'd be in there just praying, and, and they would be singing, and, and they'd be humming. And oh, come on, and humming and, and singing. Then the, the old deacon would start, listen, you know you're in trouble when the old deacon started praying, and he started singing that prayer. Father God, we come to you today. God, we ask you to bless us today. Uh, when he starts singing, you're like, uh-oh, we're going to be in here a long time, huh? huh? Some of y'all like, I ain't never heard that before. Y'all come on with me to church sometime. I'll take y'all. Huh? Oh, it's a pretty thing, but you're like, uh-oh, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> when they start singing, singing that prayer, woo. But it, it is good. It is good. But that's what I'm saying. Earnest fervently, like digging your heels in, like, uh, see, and, and, and in this scripture, that, that earnest means like, like persistently, I'm going after it over and over and over, not just one time like we do, amen, God, I'm just praying one time, no, 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 uh, over and over and over again, see, I, I, I feel like that sometimes my, my prayer life does not reflect the fact that I believe that God is going to answer, can I be honest with y'all? My prayer life sometimes does not reflect the fact that I think God is going to answer. Huh? Because I prayed one time and I walk away from it. Instead of like keep going and, and seeking God over, persistently over and over and over again. Huh? Like digging your heels in like, God, I'm going to keep seeking you. I'm going to keep seeking you for this. It says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and it produces wonderful results. Man, when you pray, it has great power. It can change atmospheres. It can change lives. It can change situations when we pray. Come on, you got to know and understand it. And then also, too, uh, that earnest means not only only, um, like persistently, but it means like a place of prayer. Huh? You got to have a place of prayer. I believe this, that you ought to have a, a certain, now you can pray anywhere and any time in any place, but I believe that you ought to have a certain place that's your place, uh, that you go and that you know the Lord is going to meet you there, that you go and the heavens are open and you know, man, God, you're going to answer. Huh? Let me show y'all a little clip real quick. Some of y'all seen this movie, War Room. Huh? Let me show you real quick. Give me, give me the volume right here real quick. Now, this is where I do my fighting. Come on, somebody. A closet. I call it my war room. So, so you wrote prayers for each area of your life? A prayer strategy. Yes. Now, I used to do what you and your husband are doing, but it got me nowhere. And then I really started studying what the scriptures say. And God showed me that it wasn't my job to do the heavy lifting. No, that was something that only he could do. 
It was my job to seek him, to trust him, and to stand on his word. Miss Clara, I've never seen anything like this. And I admire it, I really do. I just, I don't have time to pray that much every day. But you apparently have time to fight losing battles with your husband. Elizabeth, if you will give me one hour a week, I can teach you how to fight the right way with the right weapons. Go ahead and stop that. Go ahead and stop that. We'll stop Since it right you're there. Good with the acid, huh? And I showed y'all that, showed that to you so you can understand that, man, there's something about having a place of prayer. Uh, whether it's your prayer closet. And, and Jesus even says, like, when you pray, don't pray out in the open so everybody can see. He's like, oh, look at PJ. He's praying. He says, go to your closet. He says, go in and shut the door. And, and, and you pray and you seek him. You fervently seek the Lord. That's how you pray. That's how you get wonderful results. That's how you see God moves when you when you sincerely seek him in prayer. Can I give you all another, one, another little nugget about that? You know why I love that movie, too? Uh, that lady's name, that lady in the movie, her name was Clara Williams. Can I tell you all what my grandmother's name was? Clara Williams. It's uh, another reason why, why I love that movie. Huh? Uh, it may have been based on my grandma. I don't know. <laughs> That's how you get results. Come here, believers. Because some of us are walking through some tough things. Right? Some of us have family members who are walking through tough things. And we need to fervently seek the Lord over and over again. Last thing. Prayer is not just for the pious. For the pious, for the, for the religious, for the pope, the priest, uh, the prophet. Right? Prayer is not. Prayer is not just for the private, it's for the, it, for the pious, it's for the, the ordinary person. Huh? Just, just like you and me. And see, sometimes we read the scriptures and we think these people were like superhuman people. No, 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 no. Listen to what it says. Elijah was as human as we are. Elijah was a human, but he had a relationship with God, and he heard from God. He spent time with God. He sought the Lord. It's, and I love this scripture because it lets us know that, man, that if we fervently pray, guess what will happen? It will produce wonderful results. It says Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly, everybody say earnestly. When he prayed earnestly, not when he said, Lord, bless him. <laughs> Come on, somebody, right? Not, not when he prayed like a 15-second prayer, but when he prayed earnestly, when he continued to seek the Lord over and over and over again, he said that when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Huh? I mean, how in the world does that happen? By praying and seeking the Lord earnestly. By seeking the Lord's will. James says, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask for the wrong reasons. Huh? Sometimes we don't get it because we ask for the wrong reasons. We ask for it so we can be puffed up. So there everybody says, oh, look what PJ did. Ooh, that boy is tough. <laughs> and we want the glory to come to us. But when we see God's will, man, none fell for three and a half years. Now, I would have to believe that somewhere in that a rain cloud showed up. Y'all ain't with me this morning. I believe that one day a rain cloud, at least one day a rain cloud had to show up. And that Elijah just used it as a time to continually seek the Lord. drills oh God come on uh, don't even let do form come on somebody right uh, I believe he's just praying and seeking the Lord earnestly God don't let it happen uh, hold the rain back God hold the rain back then when he prayed again come on worship team come on then when he prayed again the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops so he prays one time no rain. He prays again, 
And God does what? He sends the rain. Not only does he send the rain, it says the earth began to yield its crop. Listen, I need you guys to know that there is power in prayer. Huh? That when you begin to seek the Lord and seek the Lord earnestly, there is power in God. He produces wonderful results. There is absolute power in prayer. And I believe when we fail to do it, we miss out on all God has for us. Huh? I think about the old hymn said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Huh? All our sins and griefs to bear. It says, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Listen, you need to take everything to God in prayer. Don't hold back anything from God. God's like, listen, I want it all. Bring it all to me. Lay it at the foot of the cross. Listen, whatever's on you today, whatever hardship you're going through, whatever sickness you're going through, give it to God today. Give it to God today. Let the people of God pray for you. Uh, Let us seek God on your behalf. Not only you pray, but let us seek God on your behalf as well. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to spend some time praying uh, just right now, and we're going to ask our prayer team to come up. Uh, And listen, we always ask our prayer team to come up because we want you guys uh, to have somebody to to touch and agree with uh, in prayer. So we're asking them to come up. But please know, you can sit where you are and pray. But this is what we want to do during this special time. Again, um, this is our, our, our pink out time Sunday, and a lot of us wore pink uh, to remember those and to support those who are, who are going through or have been through uh, breast cancer. And many of us have many people in our family. We have people here in this own church who've been fighting that battle. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray for your family. And so during this time, too, as we, as we go into this prayer time, uh, if that's you, if you're here, uh, maybe you're, you're walking through it right now. Maybe you have a close family member that's walking through it. Whatever it is, we're going to ask you to come so we can pray, so we can pray over you today. Not only that, but if you're going through a hardship, life has been rough, man, let us pray for you. Let us pray with you. Help. Let us encourage you in the Lord. Amen? close your eyes and bow your head. Father, we thank you so much for for the power of prayer. And God, we trust you. We know that you're leaning in from heaven and listening right now, God. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you, God, that you'll move mountains. You'll do great and mighty things. God bless. God bless. God, somebody need to see and feel you move today. Pray that you make it happen today. Today. We love you, God. We love you in Jesus' name. You just keep your eyes bowed. Just right. Just spend some time in prayer. If somebody you need personal prayer, come on now. Come on now. I'm here. We have our, our prayer team here. We have some guys in the back that's standing in the back as well. If you need prayer, come on now. Come on. Do not let the enemy keep you in your seat. He'll tell you it doesn't take all that. Yes, it does.
Father, we thank you. God, we cast all of our cares on you. God, we thank you for those who came today, God, just needing prayer. God, we thank you for those who are still in their seats, who's in the need of prayer. God, we cover everybody in this room. God, we thank you that you're an all-powerful God, that you can do all things, God that you can reach all of us in this room at one time. And God, we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would bind the enemy who wants to attack us. Help us to know and realize that we have the victory through Christ Jesus. Help us to know that, God. And God, I pray that as we leave here today, pray that we leave here boldly knowing that you've heard our prayers today because you've leaned in from heaven and you're listening. And that we can walk out of here knowing that we have a God that answers our prayer. God, thank you so much for being good to us. Thank you so much for this time of worship. Thank you for the time of opening up your word and hearing from you. God, I just pray as we leave here today that you bless our day. God, we love you. We thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen, amen. Come on and stand and sing with us. desire prayer. Uh, many of our team will still still be around in various places. Um, men, as we leave out, if you guys would help us uh, with the chairs, we appreciate it so much. Also, want to remind you, service again next Sunday, next Sunday here, again, 10 o'clock, and also our ECHO, our students are meeting today at 6.30 uh, at the dock, middle school and high school students, all right? Meeting today at 6.30, all right? Hey, thank you guys so much for coming out. God, we pray that you bless us as we leave. Pray that you give us a great week. Help us to keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Thank you again for checking out the Hope Company podcast. If you were encouraged by the message today, we would love to hear from you. To connect with us online, visit us at hopeco.org. We hope that you have been refreshed, restored, and released.